tuning in to your day off podcast hosted by your boys Corey and tony i think by the end of today i might have another best friend they're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry one podcast at a time uh you're going to grab a lot of information yeah you're going to learn a lot presented by hair district ladies and gentlemen this is it your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors Of course, I'm sitting with my best friend, Tony. What's up, buddy? What's going on, brother? Man, it is February? February, yeah. So uh, uh, I think the first thing we need to talk about is April 13th. We have Presley Poe and Friends, you know, the quarter of each year. The first quarter of each year, we are we are all about the Presley Poe. And this year is going to be a special year, man. Dude, I, you know, it's like when you go through it, like whoever was there last year, you're like, man, this was the, that was awesome. And it even gets better. I mean, yeah. it's... Yeah, this year is going to be phenomenal. The artists are are next level, and I mean, yeah, it's it's going to be an amazing show. Well, big shout out to Babelis because they're supporting us this year, and um, this is a, a a partnership with Babelis and us. Um, most of the artists that are coming in are Babelis artists. Um, we have uh, obviously we have Presley, and we have Los Cutsit, who's going to open up the uh, who's going to open up the show and show his amazing like barbering skills and just his amazing not even barbering skills because his skills are beyond you know, just like fades and stuff like that. Um, and then we have our dear friend, Olivia Smalley, OMG Artistry, who's going to be there. And then Jamie Wiley. And uh, she's actually doing a great editorial class. And and, um, and Olivia is going to be doing some social media classes as well. Um, and then we have the amazing Ira, um, Ira Pope Sage. He's going to be on the stage. And like, he's got this amazing like teaching technique where it's called like a clock cutting. And he tries to get you to understand it like you would understand an analog clock. Now he makes the joke that, you know, he's only about a half a generation away before uh, nobody knows what an analog clock is anymore. <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it's how he tries to explain what uh, uh, clock cutting is. And then um, and then we'll close the show with uh, with Miss Presley Poe and Hair by Rima. If you don't follow Hair by Rima, it's R-E-E-M-A. Um, she's just this extraordinary curly hair cutting wizard and um she, she's going to be there as well and, and not only that but she's just a darling of a person she's been incredible to work with i know um, as, as i'm looking through it i mean you got you got barbering you got cutting you got coloring social media editorial you got curly hair i mean it's like the whole shebang the whole it's like the best the the, the best buck for your for, for your education right yeah and that's just saturday and then sunday um you know um what pressy poe and friends is it's an a la carte weekend so um all day sunday you'll be able to sign up for the classes that you want um I, and listen I, every class is going to be absolutely stellar you know it, it's the best that do it you know and that's that's how, that's like what what we like to do at presley poe and friends and um at the vip experience so oh uh, yeah golly i keep forgetting to talk about that yeah so um you can also sign up for the vip experience which what that does is that puts you in the room with the artist one hour before the show um we're going to have some round table discussions so you know you can ask the artist any it'll be your time to ask the artist um anything that you want we only have like 30 or 40 tickets for that so you know make sure that you uh that you sign up for those um as well and you know again you'll be in the room at round tables with them so if you have any questions that you're dying to ask or whatever a little what champagne a little hors d'oeuvres or something like that get to the tip and cheers with the, with the artists of your choice or I mean, all of them really because yeah. i mean because they all will make a present to your table and yeah it's uh yeah it's a great opportunity to even just to network with them and most importantly, Tony and I won't be in the room. So, you know, just be you guys, you know, have in your privacy and uh, w w with the artist. Um, big shout out to Rules or Rules with sponsoring our bar this year. So uh, this year at Presley Poe and Friends, we will have a open bar, beer and wine bar. We'll have an open beer and wine bar, and that is definitely brought to you by Ruzel. Um, We have a, a few other um, um, sponsors. I know we have Marlo um beauty that's that's coming in and helping support us and and you know i'll say this the night of the event but i want to remind people that that these small shows are very expensive to produce and to um when when you go to spend your dollars remember who's supporting you 
these small shows support you, the big shows support the brands, you know, don't forget that either. So the brands that show up for the small shows, when you have a choice to spend your dollars, definitely spend them with the ones that are supporting you. So uh, a thousand percent, dude, that was well said. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, that was spot on because, uh, that's, that's the truth. That that's 100% the truth. And that's, you know, that's where I, I I've decided to spend my dollars now. You know, it's not the ones that always show up at the big ones, but the, who's showing up for, for the little ones. Cause those are the ones that really support us as, as, as artists and as an industry. But, uh, so we get in, dude, let's do it. So, uh, listen, this is a, this is really cool. So this is a friend that once again, thank you, Miss Elizabeth Bay. Um, although we had some history before that, but we, we met her at hair love. Um, she ran up and she introduced herself and then we found out that we have a whole history together, which is also very, very, uh, very, very cool as well um, but today our, our guest is Claire Monroe and not only is Claire in the industry and does hair but she does some other stuff too that's really cool um, she's like a back-end uh, VA um, and that's a virtual assistant for those of you that uh, that that are well now you're aware that um, she's a VA um, and and it, 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 it's kind of really cool that in especially I'll speak for us especially like being sweet owners like we need as much support as we can get because we just don't have the infrastructure to do everything or the time in the day to do everything, even though, uh, and we'll talk about it, even though we're working four days a week, it's still like, I don't know. I just don't know how people really do it. But anyways, um, let, let's bring Claire in and let's learn more about what she offers and, and, and what we need in our lives. Is All that right. good? Welcome to the show, Miss Claire Monroe. Thanks so much for having me. You've got one of those names like Claire Monroe. Like I can't just say Claire, right? It's got to be like, a, <laughs> like, like, like the whole that we 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 have a client named Jenny Denny. She'll never not be Jenny Denny. You know, oh as a matter God, of fact, she's it. married again, and she's not Jenny Denny, but you know, she's still. Oh Jenny. no! I know, right? Exactly. Oh, she'll always be that. Yeah, yeah, it's much better than my maiden name. It's just so much easier to pronounce. You can spell it. Like my maiden name is Polish, and it's just. What What's your maiden name? Laskowski. Yeah, that's not as easy off the lips as Claire Monroe. No, it's not. No, it's not. Yeah, when you got married, you became Hollywood. That's what a that's yeah, yeah, Hollywood yeah, yeah. name. Well, you know, actually, you know, Monroe, and you live in Virginia, so Monroe's a pretty big name over there in Virginia. It is. I think we had our, uh, oh, never mind, I'm going to get on a, <laughs> on a presidential <laughs> chat here. <laughs> Claire, welcome, dude. Welcome. I, we, we've tried to make this happen, and here we are. Yeah, I'm so excited to chat with you guys. It's always fun. I always have a great time talking to you guys and all the events and everything we've connected at. It's just, you guys are always such a great time. Same Z. Thanks, Claire. Yeah, Thanks. I don't kiddo. Yeah, uh, again, man, uh, did you go to did you go to Elizabeth Fay this past year? I didn't, no. I went to um, two other retreats earlier in the year. So with just timing, it didn't, couldn't make it happen. Yeah, yeah, for but sure. But it was so much fun last year. It's, it's such a... It's such a cool event, you know, a uh, uh, shameless plug for hair love retreat. Cause uh, you know, we, we've, truly. Been, we've been to two of them and just like, it's just, it's truly like game changing and life changing, you know? Like, yeah. That was, that was probably the first event where I'm like, I don't know anybody and I'm just going to go for it. And as an introvert, I was very nervous. And then I left with so many friends and like getting that, getting out of your comfort zone and being like, okay, this is a positive experience was just opened so many doors from there. That's, I, yeah, I, I kind of want to dive into that. So you went yeah. alone, so you're like, I'm just, I'm just doing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 I knew, I knew Lexi was going to be there. So like, I knew I was going to see her for a little bit. Um, but yeah, pretty much, I didn't know anybody. And Lexi came late, right? She Was, was she there open? Yeah, uh, I think so, yeah. yeah. I think she got dropped off and then... She was with her husband and her, her cause she and had her a baby. Yeah, she yeah. Had yeah. 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 That was pretty, that was, that was pretty cool. And, and like you yeah. said, so it's, uh, we just did, I don't know if this it, shameless plug again, but it's, it, it's not on purpose is uh, <laughs> we had, um we had uh, Presley and I went live to talk about the shadow Presley Poe program. And she yeah. talked about how she entered that weekend with imposter syndrome and she left with purpose. Mm. I thought like, yeah, what a perfect quote. Right. What a perfect quote. Well, for and, and even, but that same thing with yeah. Elizabeth Faye, you yeah. probably came with that same imposter syndrome because we all do. Yeah. Like, am I, am I okay to be here? Can I go and talk to people? And like, even talking to you guys and like the educators, like I remember uh, going up to talking to somebody and I was like, oh my gosh, this is Alicia from a salon scale. And I thought I was just talking to another attendee. Like it was just, it was just so um, like even playing field. It was really cool. 
Like that's everyone it. was welcome. And that's how the vibes were at Presley and Poe and Friends as well. So it was kind of cool to have that like extension of that. I love I love how our industry is changing to that way. Yeah, and that that that's what I want to talk about too, is that how at these small events, how you can go to somebody and and just really become and connect and and network with people, like-minded people. And they're, you know, you might see them on social media as 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 a star, but when you're at these events, they're they're right there next to you. And they're just people, people. And, and you can network yeah. and talk to them. And yeah, it's kudos to you for taking the time out and do doing that for yourself. And uh, and because a lot of times when people try to go by themselves, they get too nervous or they they won't do it because they feel uncomfortable. Yeah, but honestly, Claire, we saw it at Hair Love. We saw the the first year more so than even the second year is that people came alone and then they kind of shut down. They didn't open up, you know. So so yeah. not only do you have to go, but you have to go there and you have to open your heart to 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 the experience as well. Yeah, and then with you, yeah, so with Kristen, you know, with feeling like she's coming with imposter syndrome and then leaving with purpose that, you know, you have to have the courage to apply and knowing that you're going to be on your own and by yeah. yourself coming to this event and there's going to be some pressure maybe you th that you might think that you're going to feel. But once you get there, I mean, literally you become family. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Like just take that leap of faith and start that conversation. And like, yeah, your heart might be beating out of your chest, but like, why not? When you're there, you know, you know, yeah. With that too, God, we're gonna get. I don't know why we're here, but and, <laughs> so, but like, just understand that you're gonna have imposter syndrome. Just understand that you're gonna, yeah. you're gonna feel insecure, and that's okay. And the hundred percent okay because you're not gonna leave with it. Certainly, if you if you stay right. open to it, you know, if you right. let it shut you down, or, or if you're like, am I the only one feeling this? No, we all feel that way. You know, yeah. even 100%. even Tony and I travel together all the time, and and although we have each other, it's still like you still kind of walk in like there's that insecurity about what what it is. But you know, as I've gotten older, I just this is what it is. I, yeah, I'm gonna feel this because this is what new feels like more than like a judgment right. of myself or what I look or what I'm offering. Or I guess that's it. I mean, also like what do I have to offer the room as well? That's awesome. Anyway, yeah. we got there. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Claire, welcome, Claire. Claire. I let the cat out of the bag, but where are you from? I'm from Virginia. I'm right on the other side of the river from you guys. I'm in Leesburg. It's about 45 minutes outside of DC. I love Leesburg. I love like that whole part of Loudoun County. It's, it's so pretty. It's it's so nice. And it's it's uh, so charming. I love it. Yeah, we, we go up. There's a uh, an escape room up there that we go to. And downtown. oh, fun. Yeah. So it, it's yeah, we like Leesburg a lot. Yeah, I've uh, grew up in this area and I've left multiple times and keep coming back. I just can't <laughs> stay away. Where, where where have you gone? Um, I've gone to San Francisco, New York City, Southern oh. Virginia. So I've been every wow. kind of small city, big, all the things. And nothing's like home, right? Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like being close to a city, but like having the small town charm as well. And mm. also being close to an international airport is yeah. very key or for us we have three because all of them are exactly the same distance from us so that, that yeah, makes it really so nice right? although i'm not gonna lie we avoid dullness like the plague you do well it's like 10 minutes from my house so yeah right well <laughs> for all the inconveniences you have in the conveniences right 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 for sure that's crazy so how'd you find hairdressing how'd you how'd you get in the industry I always, I like really enjoy doing hair. And then I went to cosmetology school in high school. So I um, was like, okay, I'm going to try this. I like it. I got an apprenticeship at a salon and I was like, I like this even more. I loved it so much. I graduated with my cosmetology license. And then that's when I went to San Francisco because I was like, okay, I'm going to try college and see if I like it. Um, like I was always a straight A student. It was just like, I just love being creative and doing hair. And um, I went to San Francisco for fashion merchandising. And after a semester, I was like, nope, I love hair. What am I doing here? So I moved back and started working back at the old salon I was at. And then I was like, I always wanted to do editorial hair. So I moved to New York and I worked in a salon up there. And that was so much fun. Um, but then I started doing some editorials and was on some sets and I um, interned for a big hairdresser. And I was like, you know what? This is cool, but this is also not for me. Mm -hmm. So it was fun to like try it. And then coming back, 
Um, that's actually when I met my husband back in Northern Virginia. And then I've just continued doing hair. And now I have my own salon suite for the past four years. Kudos to, to you for knowing what's not for you. A lot of times yeah. people, people can get, uh, especially when they're assisting or apprenticing a big hairdresser or in a big time shop that, you know, they're more afraid to leave than, than follow, you know, what's best for them. And uh, you recognized it early and, and, you know, kudos to you for taking the, the yeah. time out and, and making it happen for yourself. Yeah, well, it's we, fine because it was never, you never know, you never ask what if, because yeah. you, you tried it and you're like, okay, this was cool. This was a great experience. But like, I kind of wanted to like have a little bit more work-life balance and that world, not as much. Right. Yeah. You know, that that's interesting because it took me a lot of years to, to ask myself, what if, you know, I, I was kind of like um, in the cog for a lot of years until I was like, you know what? Like, I, I, what, what am I leaving? You know, the, what I'm saying is yeah. that it's more of kind of a legacy kind of like perspective than it is like a starting my career kind of perspective. And, and, you know, once again, like Tony said, kudos to you. Cause that, Thank you. that's pretty amazing. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been, it's been great. It's been a great journey. And I've learned from every experience that I've been in and taken it now with me to where I'm at today. And which is also great helping other hairstylists and other salon owners and suite owners, because I've been there. I've worked in a small town spa as a, the only hairdresser. I've worked in a big city. I've worked in like the suburbs. I've worked in kind of every environment. So like I can pull from those experiences and share like, okay, I, I've been where you've been. I kind of want to name this podcast, the one and only, because like, you know, <laughs> everything that you've done you've kind of done it as one and alone or the or the yeah the yeah only, you know like, <laughs> like we were giving you kudos for showing up but that was nothing man that was nothing, <laughs> that was nothing. you did everything you've done everything alone until you met that fella yeah 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 what? yeah it's been fun it's been fun yeah being taking even having the courage like you said you know going to the big cities by yourself especially coming from a small town and uh that, that yeah. takes a lot of guts. So, so I mean, uh your husband uh must be a great guy or he's just in check because you're you're yeah. you're <laughs> he's a he's a great one. He's a good right. one. Because uh <laughs> yeah, you got guts. Yeah, or yeah. yeah. That's funny. That's yeah. funny yeah, he's, got, he, he's oh sorry, go ahead. No, no, you're up. Oh, I was gonna say he's got the best hair too. Like he has this curly thick man bun hair, it's amazing. Like I'm here over the hairdresser, like my hair's thinning, adding extensions. I'm like, this is just not fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, most of the men will, will be envious of, of your hair too there. Uh, right. right, right. <laughs> <laughs> most of us don't have that, like uh, that, that sharp hairline anymore. You know? right. <laughs> That's funny. So how, how did you, uh, how did you get into the virtual assistant world and like, uh, and why, I, I guess, is, you know, yeah. why did you decide to get in it and how did you get into it? And then, you know, what yeah. else, how are you, how are you helping people out? Yeah. So actually I've always done newsletters when I went independent. Um, that's really has helped me grow my business like exponentially. And I have like under a thousand, I have like around a thousand followers now, but like, I've never had a huge following. And that is what has propelled my business forward. So I have like, okay, how can I help other people with it? Um, and then when I was telling you previously, like I actually convinced my husband to start an aesthetics practice. And then, so with them, I was like, okay, we need our branding colors. We need um, your fonts. We need to set your business up. We need to have your emails together. And seeing them um, excel with just having that set up for them was like, oh, people need this. Like this could be really helpful. Like even in the hospital when, where my husband works, he's a PA. Um, they were saying like, oh my gosh, how are you so successful? How can I start my, uh, start a Botox business? And I was like, you've had like three clients, like, <laughs> you know, like you, like you're just getting started. So having that professional setting set up on your Instagram and your email marketing, is really so beneficial to set yourself up as the professional. So I've created a consulting business and VA business where I help you set up your um, pretty much your all back end of your business. So your client journey audit from your new client applications to your welcome email to newsletters. And that way you just stand out as the professional from the very beginning. 
So a lot of that's happening like uh, like online or offline now. And and do you mm-hmm. also help salons or is it mainly just salon suites? So I help salons all over the country, salon suites, independent hairstylists, and like anyone that's an aesthetics business, any business that pretty much could be in a salon suite uh-huh. that could be on a bigger scale too, I can help you with. Because it's all very similar of like having your client and your new clients and then connecting with them in between appointments. Okay. So walk me through it. So, um, so I come yeah. to you, I'm like, Claire, listen, listen, I'm working at a salon. I don't want anyone to know that I'm leaving. Right. Yes. yes. However, like I want to start this new thing. Like, like, um, you know, what's your, what's your on take questionnaire or, or, or kind of walk me through yeah. like, how, how you would bring me in as a client. Well, first of all, I would say you don't have to leave the salon if you don't want to. So even if you're just an independent, you should still have your own email list and your connection with clients. So if you do leave, you have that already. So what we would do is an onboarding call and we would go over like, who is your business? What are you about? Like, what is your target market? What do you believe in? And then from there, we'll create different emails through using Float. Now, wait, hold on, hold on. Now, when you're talking about my target market, are we talking about yeah. 32 year old pro- professional named Sally with brown hair? Yes, totally. And we would walk through that too. So, like, if you don't have that, we can like chat about it. Um, we chat about your brand fonts and colors. And if we don't have that, I have someone on my team that's a brand specialist. Um, so, that is really huge having that set up for you in the beginning. Um, and then we have your email set up. So you have like new clients, um, like a welcome email. So that way when they're walking into your first appointment with you and it's like four hours long, it's like, here's what to expect. We're going to have snacks for you, or we're going to like come with clean hair and here's a little bit about me. So we have something to chat about for four hours, you know? So they walk in already feeling comfortable, which is huge, which can be overwhelming for a longer appointment as well as creating newsletters. So you're connecting with them and the newsletters can be like your service focus. It can be products and those things can boost your retails, but really the secret sauce is connecting on a personal level. So we forget often as hairstylists that we talk to so many people in our community. So we know like the new restaurant that's opening up the TV show that everyone's listening to the great podcast. You're like this episode changed everything so we can share in those newsletters and that's what gets people excited to open emails because like emails is not that exciting right like it's kind of boring and you're like i don't really want to do email i i also think that like you know it's kind of like junk mail in your in your mailbox right like like many of the emails that we get there's just not a lot of information unless you're buying something you know, like 100%. unless it's like, oh, there, here's a sale or here's a new mortgage rate or here's a whatever, you know, which is so much of, of, of even what my email is. So it's pretty cool. You got to convince them to open it. But then once you open it, like this is not a sales. Maybe that should be the yeah. this is not a sales. Movie. Right, right, right. You know, this well, is- the subject line is so important, too, because you want them to actually open it. So like when you train, you like kind of show like you're providing lots of information and value, then they get excited like, oh, it's coming from Corey and Tony. I definitely want to open this because this is going to be really cool to open. And then and then maybe you have something with your sales at the bottom or you send sales emails later, but it's not constantly being sold to. So I think that's just super vital. Um, as well as, and like, so I can do all of that and set that up all for you, which is really great because we're overwhelmed. We have a lot on our plate as beauty professionals. Like there's so much. And then to learn some, a whole nother skill, learn tech, is just very overwhelming and a lot, or like you're tech savvy, but you're like, I just want to like go and relax on my day off. I don't want to learn another thing. Hey, way to shout out the podcast your day off. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. You know, um, so yeah, I love helping so how people do you, with how that. Do you, how do you, okay, I'm going to back up a little bit. Go so, for it. So I'm a hairdresser in San Francisco. I hire Claire. Claire lives in like this beautiful like country of Leesburg. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, how do you, what's the conversation that we're like, like, what's the new shows or what's the new restaurants or, you know, that just that more organic newsletter, what would that be with me? And I don't want to be in San Francisco, but put me someplace, Tony. And it, in Bozeman, yeah, Bozeman, it. Bozeman, Montana. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's whatever you talk about with your clients. 
You know, that's the conversation. So I create templates for you that you can plug, plug and play. And I also have, I do have a course. So if you're like, okay, I'm really interested. I want to do this, but I am tech savvy and I'm not ready to invest yet. Well, I have the elevated email course where it walks you through step-by-step step exactly how to set everything up. And then something new, exciting coming later is elevated inbox, which will have a newsletter template that's already done for you. So that's coming out soon. So you don't even have to think about that. That's awesome. So it's just, so you just like ask a question and then we fill it out and then that's it. Yeah, pretty much. Wow. Yep. That's, yeah. That's pretty cool. To, yeah. To almost yeah. like, yeah. I mean, I, w I, yeah, I wish I had it 10 years ago when, you know, you when you kind of set all this up, because when you set it all up, you're making it. So it's uh, you know, like you said, mindless, not mindless, but it's just so yeah. easy to plug and play and, and not worrying about it when you're, when you're off, you know what I mean? A lot of times yeah. when you're off, all right, I got to get this up. I got to get that done. I got to, you yeah. know, just focusing on so much outside of, of just doing the client. So. Yeah. That's yeah. That's always my goal is to make things effortless. So like, if I'm going to set something up for you, you have to know how to use it because otherwise what's the point, you know, like I want you to use it and make it easy and simple for you. That's pretty, that's, it, that's pretty incredible. And like you said, like when I went to the salon suite, I kind of wish I had that because I think I, I think that from the salon that I worked at to going into the salon suite, it, it was a different model altogether. And there was, and right. it's really difficult. It was really difficult, certainly at the time. And, and with all the stress of getting everything set up, it was really difficult to kind of like, you know, create that like salon experience or that salon feeling yes. when you're in a salon suite. And, and it, frankly, it's just something that I'm not very good at anyways. So I would love to have someone kind of like hold my hand and, 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 and show, show me the ways, you know? <laughs> yes. Well, like most businesses, they have different departments for everything. So they have their marketing department, they have HR and all of this. And then as salons and salon suites, we're everything. And we're like the photographer or the barista or the customer service management. I think it's a lot, you know? So like, if you can take one thing off your plate and like have it done for you, like why, why not? That's amazing. A thousand percent. Yeah. I'm like, uh, uh, I think we're going to be talking here soon, Claire. Cause I, uh, yeah. uh I, I think I want to, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm very, I'm excited about it, dude. It, it's, yeah. cool. it, it's, it's really, really cool. fun. Yeah. And it's great for like educators and podcasts and, you know, creating those, um, new episode emails or for educators. I work with a bunch that help them with their courses and how they can use their social media to be more effective with their email marketing. Um, it's really like email marketing is such an amazing tool that's so underutilized because it's just like, oh, that's like not exciting. But when you can have a 70% open rate, like that's incredible. That is incredible. Yeah. So that's a big one because I know I don't open up 70% of mine. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, I'm like, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, that, that's the other thing. Like, we always think that our customers uh, experience things the way we do. And we can't think that way Let's because get, we might not open all of our emails, but like they might. No, they definitely don't Claire. I'm not all of them, but like, <laughs> yeah, well, you're never going to get a hundred percent like in anything. Right. That's just not, that's not realistic. But if you could get 70% versus four to 5% on social media, I mean, that's pretty cool. That's very cool. That's very cool. Do you have any um, suggestions as far as like what a subject line should look like to kind of, uh, um, you know, increase that or improve that? Yes, it should be something interesting, exciting. You can put people's names in it. Um, it should relate to what's in your email as well. But um, just try to make it, and that's kind of the hard part. So you can even use ChatGBT to help mm -hmm. you out and like help you rewrite. Just please don't put unlock or unleash in there, you know? Unlock or unleash. Yes, I feel like that's all ChatGBT. It's like, that's ChatGBT. Oh, unlock her on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Rocket, rocket ship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guilty. Guilty of the rocket ships. Thanks. Yep. For that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought. But anyways, and yeah, yeah. so 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 if even if you were leaving a salon, but you say you don't have to, do you like when someone le it, it go goes into the suite, um and should should they like kind of create their own website and if they do do you help with that do you i mean what are some of the things that that 
you know, going into the sweet life, uh, the must haves and what you do, uh, that, that can help with that. Yes, you would definitely, I recommend for any salon suite or salons to have a website and a landing page for sure. And I do have a website developer on my team as well. So they'll create a custom website for you with a logo and your brand colors and brand fonts. And then we do your new client applications and your emails together. So that way everything's very seamless. Like you're not going back and forth with client new clients that are DMing you like, hey, I want to come in. It's like, well, just fill out my new client application and then I'll send you exactly what appointment to book. And having your website, I think it's still important to have somewhat of a like a landing page. Will people go to it? Yes. They'll be looking at Instagram more, but it's important to have that for like your pricing and that kind of information as well. And then how do um like a lot of ours is managed through like a scheduling app. So like like how do you then take like, you know, your branding and stuff and, and add it into like the scheduling app so it looks, you know, the same, I guess, or or continuity? It just depends on how much customization you can do on that app. So if you can change the colors, that's awesome. Um, I use Gosh Genius, so I can do a little bit, but I usually lean on my Flowdesk emails because I can make them branded versus using emails from them. You can't really brand them as much, um, very minimally actually, and like adding in pictures. So that's why I use a whole separate system to create that full branding package. How did, how did, do you know how, like when, whenever I send out like a, 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 a mass email to my clients, it's always through the, the scheduling app. Do you know how to yeah. get those emails off of the, uh, could you help like get it off of the scheduling app? I'm yeah. Gonna, yeah. You should have like a history for that. Like, I think, cause usually you have to like add on a, like an email marketing to your software system. Uh -huh. So I would recommend not paying for that and putting it towards Flowdesk, um, just because of that branding and you can customize it a lot more. Well, that makes sense. But like, that I still, sense. I still have like your appointments coming in two days. That's still coming for my booking software. So like someone like Corey and I, who we, we, we share uh, one appointment app because we share most of our clients. So the clients yeah. go in there and uh, say, you know, they book a color and then they can add a haircut and then they book one with me on, or, uh, or they can do it in individually on different days. So if we, if we, had you like kind of build a website and uh would there be like links to the appointment app you know separately or oh yeah yeah you'd have like two i would do like two different links so you have one for your like new client application and then one to your existing clients because your existing clients should have uh be able to access that pretty easily so I don't know, like how it would, if like you open your app, if it goes to like, then you have to pick Corey or Tony, or you would have that separate, just separate buttons. Yeah. Inside the app, it's just, it just, it asks, you know, what service do you want? Do you want a haircut? And then it'll drive you to Tony or, or are you looking for a hair color? And then it'll drive yeah. you to me. I mean, look, yeah. we're compartmentalized like that. So it yeah. works out, but I mean, if we did it, well, I mean, we have Katie, but well, anyways, I'll get, I'll get, <laughs> it'll, end up being, it'll end up being like a, a scheduling app conversation. And I don't right, know. right, right. <laughs> Try, trying to avoid that a little bit. Um, that's cool. So at what, so if I'm about to open my salon suite, like, let's say I'm doing it, like I'm doing it in two months, you know, yeah. when, when do you have a recommendation of when everything should be up and ready before, um, before, before you open? I would say there's no timeline, like in a perfect world, a month before, but do I work with salon suites that have been open for years? Yes. Is it fine? Absolutely. And that's what I do like a white glove service where I walk you through of like how to launch to your clients that already exist. And like, here's the new systems. Here's the new ways. I'm so excited to share it with you. Um, so ideally you had to do a month before, but also like you're doing so many things of like picking up furniture and like purchasing color orders and it can be a lot, but, um, that's what I would recommend, but there is no perfect time. So what are some of the big mistakes that you see that we're doing? Like us personally or not us personally, but just like <laughs> just as an industry, no, on the sweet side, oh, like, up. you know, like what are, what are yeah. the big mistakes that we're doing or, or that we're leaving on the table or leaving behind? I was going to have to take a Xanax before she answered that. <laughs> 
Yeah. So um, also something I do is a client journey audit. So like I walk through your whole system and say like, okay, this copy needs to change or this, you know, this needs to go, or you need to add this in here. So I can really customize that per person. Um, but really and per person, you're talking about the operator, not the client, right? The, uh, what do you call it a client? Yeah. What? The, it. I would, I would say like, um, for the per salon or per, per business. Got it. For the client journey audit. So like I would go through all of your systems and, and when see you like, say, hold on, hold on. So when you say client journey, sorry, I want to get this. I mean, yeah. the client you. journey. Okay. So yes. our, the client, not our clients, not our Correct. Guests. Client Correct. journey audit. Okay, cool. All right, cool. I can understand it now. Cause I was, I was, you were like, I'm, I was thinking you're going to go through all my clients. Good luck. Oh there, no, 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 no. Is there a, like a common like thing that you see that, like most of us that are slacking in, or is it? We're slacking I would in? say sending emails and not sharing information. Like we have so much information to share. And I think like sharing your favorite, um, like dream services. Like, I think there's a big thing to go, like go and find new clients and find your dream services. Well, like maybe 50% of your current clients would do those dream services if you shared more about it. And made sure they knew about it because they already really love you. They're already raving fans. So maybe we can share them and shift them into those dream services that you actually love doing too. But how, but again, how do you, how do you have that conversation without it sounding like a sales pitch, you know, especially from an email? So I would share, like, I just did this, like, let's talk about extensions, for instance, like showing your before and after and why this person loved it so much. And like what the confidence you're kind of sharing, like more of the results, not like I did this. And then we did this. It's more of like, she went from feeling like maybe insecure because her hair is thin. And then she's feeling amazing and confident and how easy it is. So you can, we can steal the imposter syndrome to purpose. Yeah, so you're not like you're not like saying you need this. It's just like, hey, look, check this out, guys. I'm I'm, I'm sharing this experience that this my client had. Yeah, yeah, because you don't want to be like pushy because that's not that's not ever that's not fun, you know. And then you feel like a used car salesman. And same thing with like product too, like kind of sharing like, okay, I love this hairspray or I love this um, moisturizing mask for winter time. Like it's just the best thing ever. And just leave it at that, you know, and then seeing like, it's that, it's that repetition of like those touch points of seeing it multiple times, gets them excited about it. Okay. No, you're up, Claire. Oh, cause they're, cause they're seeing it from like influencers, like, right. Like beauty influencers, they're seeing it all the time. They're getting excited about a product. So like, why not we be the beauty influencer? Mm, I like that. I, uh, let's go back to uh, the client journey audit. I, I yeah. took it sideways on it, but, but walk us through what that looks like. So that looks like it, you can um, choose that service. And then I don't even speak with you at first. And I just go through and I audit everything. I audit your website, your emails, any applications, your, like I go over Instagram, like I'm not an Instagram expert, but I can look through it and say like, here, I think you should suggest this and this. Um, and then we hop on a call for about an hour and I share with you a very detailed list and um, you can ask any questions about how you can elevate in your marketing. That that that's amazing. What a, what a like an amazing service to uh, to be able to do, especially when if you're you know first getting started or, or, or you're jumping off, just to learn how to do yeah. it. You know, I mean, a lot of it's just about you know learning how whether you take it over or not. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of fun, and um, I feel like also too a lot of people put a lot of policies everywhere, and it's like how can we change that to make it fun, and not like you're doing something wrong before you even walk in the door. It's like having a partner uh when you're opening up or trying to rebrand without i mean they're taking so much off your plate you know they're, they're helping you out you know and, and that partnership is, is amazing but yet it just frees you up to really own your own you know piece of the pie it, it it's and it takes the thought process out of it right because you because because you can get stuck you can get stuck in pause for weeks about like what color should it be or what, what yeah. should it be? Or, you know, like, if, like I would have loved Claire to come in on day one and, or, you know, day minus, minus 30 mm -hmm. and, and go like, Hey, here's some font suggestions. And then I would, if I could just go, yep, yeah, that's it. Because I've got other th stuff to worry about. Or yeah, that color, yeah. that color it's works. It's easy not to do it because you're overwhelmed. 
You know what I mean? Like I, like I mean, sending the emails or posting that. I mean, it's easy. Just you know what? It's too much. I, I'm I'm not going to do that. I, I, I would say yes because I'm not doing it because it's too much. You know, like like yeah. I love the idea of the newsletter. Love 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 the idea of the newsletter. You know, but yeah. you know, like to do it seems like a lot of work, and, and to then you know push send sound seems like a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I love doing that because it's like helping beauty professionals with their business and taking that weight off their shoulders is like, it just brings me so much joy because I know their business is growing from that. And then they can use more time to enjoy their day off, enjoy their time with their family, put more time in work or on social media. Like, you know, you can, you get your time back, which is everything. I know for the first year that I had the suite, I didn't have that time. I had no time Yeah, I, for like a year, you know, it took me a year to kind of like you know, just settle in and to kind of figure out how to do things and, and and all that. I mean, we talk often that, you know, like sweet life is nice, but, but, and you, and you make more money, but, 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 but you're paying for that money in a sense, right? Like it takes so much yeah. more work than working in a salon that, that, you know, the, the, the extra money that you're making, it's not free money. It's earned money, you know, no. it's earned income, you know, and, and I think that a lot had of a Claire Monroe in your life, if you had a Claire Monroe in your life, <laughs> not only could you generate more money because you'd look legit, but you know, it, it also like you, you, you get that time takes, back, you get that time back and it takes a lot of that weight back, you know, and, and, you know, honestly, I mean, I guess to, to, to double down on your point is that, you know, to, for a year it took me before I had any time, but you know, and to say that I, I, I'm not doing certain things because I couldn't fit it into even that year, you know, now, like yeah. shoulda, coulda, woulda, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. It's so much, it's so much. And like, we get, we got into being hairdressers to enjoy our life too. Like we didn't, we can't got into our, this industry because it's creative. It's fun. We love to help our clients, but we also want a flexible schedule. Yeah. You know, we also want to enjoy our life and have a life outside of hair too. It's so important. I'm going to jump on the soapbox a little bit because you brought up a thing about policies and and frankly it's my pet peeve. Like yeah. like 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 it seems like it's so difficult to make an appointment with a lot of with a lot of hairdressers now because it's like you yeah. got to do this, you got to do this. There's all these rules to life and I'm like, you know, we have enough rules in life. Like that's not the space that I want to create. I don't want to create like a policy. Yeah even you know and and now granted i'm also in a position to where i've had the same clients for 30 years and and i don't have 90 percent of the issues that, that people have and right. and somebody's late i don't need a late policy because well one nobody's ever late and but also if somebody's late claire after all these years of doing their hair i assume something's wrong i don't right. know if they're taking advantage i don't assume right. what they're doing you know now you know when you have clients at that i think that i handle them on a on a, on a case unless you had a little short pixie russian yes <laughs> yes your short pixie russian doesn't play by the but you know what you yeah. were it so you know there's only one thousand person, percent there's yeah. only one person yeah that and I, just need, I just need a policy for her for her the, it's called the, the pixie the pixie policy oh my gosh right. there's only one there's always one <laughs> there's, a, there's always one that's absolutely true claire where can people find you how can they get a hold of you to give it give us give us the details yeah yeah, they can find me on Instagram at Claire Monroe Hair Co. Um, just send me a DM. We can chat on there. I also have my website at ClaireMonroeHairCo.com. Um, and I'd love to chat further if you're interested. Um, I also have the elevated inbox that's going to be coming out soon. Um, and I'm so excited about that. Dude, that's so good. Thank you so much. Thanks for uh, thanks for offering this service. Because uh, again, I, I I wish I had you in my life in 2015 when I went into that. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for having me. It was so great chatting with you guys. Absolutely. Always. You always have a place with us. And, and, tell, and, and tell our listeners, our listeners, are you coming to Presley Poe and Friends? I am definitely coming to Presley Poe and Friends. You have to be there. It's so much fun. It's just such a great show. Such great vibes. I wish we had a different word than show because to me, it feels more like an event than it does a show. It is. Yeah, for sure. You know, yeah. it's not because show like I think it just we've done shows, right? This is not that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one, we only sell 150 tickets. So like it's it's just it's there's not that many people in the room and the room no. support it. So so that's really it's, nice. it's great connecting with people too, like the amount of people that I've met there too, and have like actually reconnected later. I was like, Oh, you were there? Like, oh my gosh, I how did we not talk? So it's just it's a really it's a really great event. 
it's it's cool and then you know one thing that we never talk about but um we've actually had uh, quite a few people sign with uh, with different brands um at Presley Poe and Friends too so we don't really oh, talk about cool. it because it's you know it's other people's stories and stuff but yeah uh, it's something that in, internally we're we're like like proud pop. really proud of that yeah exactly you know That's Presley talks that about a lot Presley's like we get people signed you know and like it's anyways it's cool Claire thank you so much we can't wait to see you on April 13th um yeah, dude, can't wait, and uh, let's let, let's get together. Um, for sure, let's get together that weekend. Yeah, for sure. Thanks so much, guys. I'll see you soon. Thank awesome. you. So, Miss Claire Monroe, thank you very, very much for joining us on your day off. this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast share it with friends give us a rating and drop a review to listen to all the latest podcasts please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet and to stay connected on and off the show you can follow us at hair Distry on instagram and all other social media platforms thanks again and we'll see you next time peace and love